Welcome to the topic delegated legislation. There are three topic learning objectives which you need to be aware of. The first, outline the three types of delegated legislation. The second, to be able to explain the controls on delegated legislation. And thirdly, to assess the importance of delegated legislation, which is the analytical and evaluative piece. So for this video, we're just going to concentrate on the first learning objective, the three different types. When we're talking about delegated legislation, what we're essentially talking about is Parliament transferring some of its lawmaking powers to another. Now it does this for two reasons as we've seen in the previous video. The first, uh, a lack of time to deal with all legislative matters. And secondly, uh, Parliament lacking some detailed knowledge about specific law that would best be served by another person who actually does have that knowledge. So it all begins, in fact, with Parliament passing what is known as an Enabling Act. Now, the Enabling Act gives uh, specific details as to what type of delegated legislation is going to be created, who, in fact, is going to create it, and also specifies uh, how that power can be exercised. Now, obviously, this is an important control on delegated legislation because without it, effectively, that individual or uh, local council, as we'll see, could actually abuse the power and exercise it in a way that Parliament hadn't foreseen. So the Enabling Act is really those rules and regulations laid out for them. So the three different types of delegated legislation are as follows. We have an ordering council, We have a statutory instrument, and we have a bylaw. So those are our three types of delegated legislation, all made by different uh, individuals. So starting with the ordering council, This is made by the Privy Council, which, as we will see, consists of the Queen and also senior members of uh, Cabinet, uh, including, of course, uh, the UK Prime Minister. And when they pass an order in Council, that will take a national effect. It will affect everybody in the country. Statutory instrument uh, made by a government minister responsible uh, for a particular department, so for example it could be the Minister for Transport, uh, if it were uh, a statutory instrument concerning detailed regulations about uh, transport, and again it will take national effect so whatever law is made by that Minister will affect everyone in the country. And then finally we've got bylaw. Now bylaws are made by local authorities, so again Whatever law that they actually create, it will only affect citizens within their local area. For this topic, we want to make sure that we show to the examiners that we understand the correct terms. So, in fact, when we talk about primary legislation, this means uh, acts of Parliament, otherwise known as statutes, that have been created by Parliament and no one else. For this topic, though, delegated legislation, where... Parliament has transferred some of that lawmaking power to another, whatever legislation that, as we've just seen, the Privy Council, a uh, government minister or a local authority creates will in fact be secondary legislation. And that is what we're talking about for this topic. Order in Council, only the Queen and the Privy Council have the authority to make this type of delegated legislation. The composition of the Council includes the Prime Minister, currently, as of 2014, David Cameron, and other leading members of his government, so in other words, his cabinet front benches. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister Nick Clegg, he was appointed in 2010 as the Lord President of the Council, and we should also note as well that whilst we're talking about the Council, which is its lawmaking function, and relevant to this topic, you may also find that the Privy Council has a judicial committee. Now this is a final court that uh, acts for overseas UK territories and dependencies, but this isn't relevant to this topic. An ordering council is often used to implement European Union law. The UK has been part of the European community since 1973 and is one member state of 27. As it's known today, the European Union, 
the European Parliament passes a number of legislation, one of which of course is a directive, and the directive is given to each member state to implement a specific European Union law, for example anti-discrimination laws, within a specified time limit. Now as we've seen in the previous video, if this were to go through UK Parliament it may take many months or even a year, and as I've already said, if there is a time limit then the UK has to make sure it's implemented otherwise they'll be in breach and an order in council could be the best way to do that. There's also power to make law in emergency situations under the Civil Contingencies Act 2004. So for example, if there were a national fuel shortage crisis in the UK, uh, which led to panic buying, the Prime Minister and Government, to ensure that law and order was actually exercised, may well want to use an order in council to regulate the situation, and for example specify to the public how much they are allowed to purchase in terms of petrol. Now I just disappeared for a moment because I wanted to be able to show you this picture in full. Now this picture is the Queen and Privy Council meeting on average once a month, usually at Buckingham Palace or Windsor Castle, and the ministers in attendance will seek her formal approval to a number of orders that they have already approved beforehand. There is nothing secret about the Privy Council, all orders are in the public domain with the date and place it was made and who was in attendance. And what's also interesting is the Queen also approves proclamations, formal notices covering the dissolution of Parliament, coinage and the dates of bank holidays. The second type of delegated legislation is called a statutory instrument. Now these are rules and regulations made by government ministers. Each government minister has a department that they are responsible for and the authority to create such laws. So for example the Minister for Transport will be able to deal with road traffic regulations such as setting the speed limit on motorways for vehicles which of course would affect everyone across the country. Another example of a statutory instrument is the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984 otherwise known as PACE. Here the Minister for the Home Office in other words the Home Secretary, produces codes of practice for the police which gives them guidance as to how they can exercise their specific powers such as stop and search and the power of arrest. One more final example of a statutory instrument. Under the Dangerous Dogs Act 1991, the Home Secretary can add more breeds that he or she considers to be dangerous to the statute therefore enabling the courts to be able to do something about it and to protect the public. The third and final type of delegated legislation is called a bylaw. Now, these are made by local authorities to cover matters only within its specific area. So, for example, a county council can pass laws affecting the whole country, while a district or town council can only make bylaws for its district or town, such as not permitting alcohol in a particular area. One final example of a bylaw fines incurred by people who let their dogs foul in public places. Thanks for watching.